right, so you should have your box here full of parts you picked up from the bookstore or actually picked up from Ted. And first off, we've got the chassis. And you can see the chassis here has pre-punched holes in it. And you should have three wire guides there. And if you open up your box, we're going to go into the box. There'll be a transformer. I have these components all on a rail right now, and they will end up like that. You're going to have a couple of uh, five and a quarter cable trays and a seven inch cable tray. You'll see how all these go together shortly. We've got a lot of push buttons. Now, we've got indicator lamps, and we'll show you how to install those push buttons. The push buttons come in uh, multiple pieces, but the fronts, these are bayonet mounts, and I'll show you how to mount those. We have a strain relief. The strain relief for the power cable coming in. Okay. Have some limit switches. Now the limit switches we have just have a push button on top. We don't have the various actuators. You have roller actuators, spring actuators, wide range of different types of actuators that go on top of here but um, it's up to you as part of the class to go and research those different types of actuators here's our control transformer that we'll be using and I flip it over here you've got the standard control wiring diagram over here with H1, 2, 3, and 4 and then you have the secondary over here, X1, X2, X3, X4. These are dual voltage transformers. You can come in with 120 or 240 on the primary and go out with 12 volts or 24 on the secondary. And so make sure you pay attention to the uh, wiring diagrams on the transformer. You'll have terminal blocks. Terminal blocks, end stops, grounding blocks. This is your line circuit breaker, one and a half amp line circuit breaker. And then a, it looks like about a, a two amp secondary for the uh, control. You've got a socket for your little ice cube relay. Couple of contactors here and the contactors will be paired up with the uh, overload relays. And I'm going to rip this open and bring this out. This is an overload relay. And that will get paired up with a contactor. And you'll tighten them down, tighten these screws down. And that makes a starter, a motor starter, when you put a contactor with an overload relay. So you have two different types of relays working together. An electromechanical relay that operates on voltage and then a thermal relay or overload relay that trips on too much current. And uh, we'll have a interlock block. Okay, let's see. Open this up. And you'll find this item here, the BIC0. Open that up and... Uh, Boy, here we go. Now, this is a mechanical interlock. And you see the little two toggles on here. Got a toggle there and a toggle there. Now, if this one operates, this one is locked out and it can't. Now, this one operates. This one is locked out and it can't operate. So, but if I, if I have them both off, this will work and then this will work. But if this one is turned on, it'll prevent the other one from being turned on. It turns off, then the one on the left turns on. This cannot operate. I'm pulling on it and nothing will happen. Go back to turn the left one off, and now I can turn the right one on and off all I want. You can see that these go, and the little tabs here, they mate with the little tabs here on your contactors. Okay, and we'll talk about these when we get more with the forward and reverse. There are two little feet that go with these. And what they're for 
therefore putting therefore putting the in between the contactors now you this shows an end stop between the two contactors we will not be assembling it with that that has to be out and these pushed right up against each other and these little feet here you get that focused right these little feet will uh, hold the two contactors together so don't lose them so you've got a lot of different components here okay open this up and we've got a normally open contact block with this manufacturer normally open contacts are green and you have two sets two terminals here and it's a set of normally open contacts between them and I should open up another one and I'll probably find a red one here it is and here's a red one now on this the red one indicates normally closed okay with this manufacturer you're able to put these on here and they drop in place very gently in there and there's a couple little tabs little pins on here see those pins there those line up with the holes you drop them in place gently and tighten this down now if you want to set a normally open and normally closed contacts you put one on either side okay that gets you a set of normally open and normally closed off the same push button now the other thing about these is that you can also stack them vertically okay we can put these on here and we can stack them vertically screw the first one in and then put the next one in there and you can kind of get crazy with this but these days with PLCs you use one set of contacts run to the PLC and then you use, do all the contacts internally in the PLC but if you have an example or an application where you need to have multiple contacts run off the same push button you can do that you know you can stack as many as you want out there I've seen as many as four stacked up and believe me that becomes a little unwieldy out there and if you're in a cabinet, you got to make sure the cabinet can close once you stack up all four of them. You should find a baggie with all your nuts and bolts and screws. And these little black round things are the feet for the bottom of your chassis. So you don't uh, scratch up your mom's dining room table or your wife's dining room table and then, uh, you know, be in, be in the doghouse. So when you're putting together... Put the uh, feet on it first, and uh, I'll have all that information for you on which parts to use and everything else. Okay? And looking over this, I think that's pretty much it for the uh, inventory. You guys go through this inventory, the entire box. Make sure you have everything. Count the screws. You know, look at the screws. You've got different types of screws as far as lengths. Longer ones, shorter ones, and some medium length ones also. Don't assume that they're all the same. One of the things that I do, what I'm looking at here, I've got three different lengths of screws. A half inch length, a three inch length, and I think that's a one and a half inch long one there. Okay. What I do is I lay out all of my hardware and put them together. Make a stack of all the half inch ones. Make a stack of all the three eighths inch ones. And that way you know what it is that you have in everything. And you don't accidentally use a, uh, say, a half inch where you're supposed to be using a three eighths, things like that. You'll have a selector switch. Okay. And I'm going to show you how to put all those in in another video.